हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम टू दिस सेगमेंट आज मैं डिस्कस करना करने वाली हूँ आप लोगों से बेसिकली लेट्स टॉक अबाउट सर्वाइकल डायलेटर्स टुडे दिस सेगमेंट इज बेसिकली आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द वेरियस इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स फॉर डायलिटेशन एंड क्यूरिटाज द फर्स्ट वन विच हैपन्स टू बी द डायलेटर्स सो मेनी टाइम्स द एग्जामिनर्स वुड लव टू आस्क यू हाउ टू सेट द ट्रॉली फॉर टी This was a question asked to one of my colleagues when I was uh, giving the practical exam, and she fumbled. So uh, when you, even if you become a consultant someday uh, in in the newer hospitals, the the nurse will come to you and asks, "Okay, ma'am, we have to make a DNC set. Can you please help us? What all has to be there?" So very very important, very practical, and a, a question which I don't think I will um, pass the candidate. She's not able to answer. so you should be very very well versed with the the instruments in a cesarean tray uh, the in cesarean set instruments in a dnc set instruments for hysterectomy because this is nobody's going to pardon you for that so next time whenever you are assisting in the ot i would expect you to know that uh, what all instruments are there in the dnc set in the cesarean set and in the hysterectomy set so today without wasting any further time let's talk about higars dilators or just cervical dilators a very good instrument to choose uh, on the on the table if at all the examiner asks you to choose an instrument a very good instrument to choose and uh, nevertheless a very good instrument to give vibe on because not much is going to be asked only those indications which you're pretty well versed with if you've seen uh, you know every day happening uh, those things will be asked very simple questions like complications which can be which are associated with uh, dilators and uh, so on and so forth easy questions let's see how do how do they go so let's start with uh, what kind of uh, dilators are there in the market so you have higars dilators which you can, which you can see which uh, everybody knows uh, higars dilators is the most common fenton's dilators can you see that they are a little more pointed higars is a little rounded convo and this is this one is a little more pointed i am safer with higars than i am with uh, fenton's because i when i'm going towards a pregnant uterus which is mostly the condition uh, when you are trying to dilate the cervix so i wouldn't want to go with fenton's at all then there is hanks dilator which i think is even more finer than that ambler's dilator bonies dilator ramses there are many kind of dilators are there you should just know the uh, reason why they are you know different from higars dilator because that can be asked so i'll tell you as i go so anything which is made of stainless steel can be sterilized by boiling autoclaving maybe single ended or it could be double ended solid rod curved near the tip and somewhat tapering towards the tip so basically it tapers down the tip and then slowly it you know picks up the girth the curve is shallow and dilating portion is within the terminal uh, 1.5 cm of the dilator there is a difference of 3 mm in the diameter of the tip and the maximum dilating portion and it goes gradually okay from the tip towards the you know the the uh kind of heavier portion the difference is around 3 mm and it slowly extends the maximum dilating portion of the dilator according to these dilators is numbered from 3 by 6 to 23 by 26 the number signifying the diameter of the numerator the diameter of the tip and the denominator the maximum diameter so tip is uh, 23 let's say and maximum girth is 26 this is what this mean the meaning of numerator and denominator now what are the indications if i just simply if i don't even read from here if i just ask you the indications so obstetric indications and gynae indications let's first talk about the obstetric indications so basically for for dilatation and curettage in first trimester not just first trimester that is termination of pregnancy in first trimester retained products uh, curettage and evacuation in of course the first trimester retained products in second trimester uh what what else can it be suction aspiration in first trimester so dilatation followed by suction evacuation or uh, dilatation followed by suction evacuation so even if you want to use sponge holding forceps later on or rovum forceps later on first and foremost thing is that you have to dilate so it's a prior procedure to curettage prior procedure to evacuation prior procedure to suction in the first trimester abortions even in case of evacuation of retained products this you have to first dilate and uh, i think as far as uh, obstetric conditions are concerned this uh, incompetent or i'm going to discuss with you later but right now as far as your uh, obstetric indications are concerned 
I think that's it. Okay. Then what else? For now, in gynae. So for uh, endometrial curettage in gynae, number one. Number two, for any endometrial polyp removal, placental polyp removal, leomyomatous polyp removal, even before hysteroscopy, sometimes you need to dilate. Especially in case of uh, operative hysteroscopy, you need to dilate. To remove the IUCD by curettage when other measures have failed. Otherwise, you know, a stuck IUCD is difficult, so you need to first dilate it. Yes, in case of amputation of the cervix for the gills operation, if you remember, if you know about the for the gills operation, uh, which I had taught in uh, uh, prolapse, you would know that you have to dilate the cervix. This is basically uh, one of the component of follicles operation. Treatment of cervical stenosis. If at all you want to do anything, but there is stenosis, you would want to go in for, first of all, dilating the cervix. To <coughs> simply drain <coughs> the uterine contents like hydrometra, pyometra, Secondary to cervical stenosis. Yes, especially in case of post-RT patients who have received radiotherapy after cervical carcinoma. And they have uh, hydrometra, biometry, I've done a lot of them. So you just dilate it and it starts draining. Application of an intrauterine source of irradiation. In case of primary dysmenorrhea, yes, this is one of the, uh, one of the treatments. Yes, now we'll talk about the diagnosis of incompetent OS. Now listen to it closely. The passage of size 8 Higars dilator through the internal loss, not the external loss, in the non-pregnant state without resistance or causation of any pain will lead to the diagnosis of incompetent OS. And I'm talking about internal loss and the passage of Higars 8 dilator. Shirodgar's test for incompetent loss when a size 8 dilator that has been passed through the internal loss in a non-pregnant woman is withdrawn, there is distinct snap as it passes out of the internal loss. If the os is not incompetent, the absence of the snap suggests cervical incompetence. This is, you know, basically theoretical people who are from yesterday are going to ask you these kind of questions because there's no snap and everything which is heard so, so briskly and so cleanly. Uh, but yes, it's an old test when you did not have the ultrasound modality so frequently and so easily and so readily available. Uh, that time maybe you, you used to hear these snaps and all, but now we don't. Yes, most important, <laughs> laparoscopy. It's used for manipulation. See, first of all, before inserting the uterine manipulator, you'll have to dilate the cervix and then introduce the uterine manipulator to you manipulate the uterus in the uh, laparoscopy. So that was one use. Now, how is it used? See, Higar's dilator achieves rapid dilatation. The procedure is carried out basically under general anesthesia or a paracervical block, basically under general anesthesia, honestly. Cervix, cervix is first exposed, anterior lip is held with the vulcillum, the uterine cavity is first sounded. The smallest dilator is held like a pen and is lubricated, tip is passed into the cervical canal, okay? Holding like a pen. Penetration beyond the internal loss by its widest diameter is avoided by the little finger jutting just against the uh, patient's perineum, you know? This is how. You're putting it inside but your little finger is, you know, guarding. So you don't accidentally force it inside that's what you have to take care of very very careful you have to be when you're using dilator because mostly when you will uh, you know be there out in the uh, out in the uh, you know your own hospital your clinic whatever you'll be out in the practice you will see that you basically need the dilator for uh, you know the abortion process that is either dilatation evacuation or dilatation and curettage or a retained RPOCs and all these cases the patient will have a very very <coughs> soft uterus. So if you, if you go by accident into a different angle you can penetrate and you can cause rupture of the uterus so you have to be very 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 sure of where exactly and how exactly you are going. So penetration beyond the internal os by its widest diameter is avoided by the little finger which is against the patient's perineum but you are going like this. The dilator is held in position for 2 to 3 seconds and is then removed so that the next dilator may be passed. So you put it inside and then you remove it slowly. Higar's dilator has a rapid increase from the diameter at the tip of the to the maximum diameter. So it may fail in some cases to dilate the cervix. Now cervical tears. 
are one of the complications. Let's talk about the complication of the diarrhea. What, what all it can do? It can cause false passage. It can cause cervical, it, it can cause cervical tears. And most importantly, it can cause cervical or uterine perforation. Okay. Infection and incompetent or from excessive dilatation that I have not encountered. But very common complications are not even cervical tears. I would say this is hemorrhage caused because of either cervical perforation or uh, uterine perforation. So basically it's a descending cervical artery that causes brisk hemorrhage if at all there is a cervical perforation. And if it's a uterine perforation that can happen in case of uh, you know post C section patient who have come to you for uh, abortion or extremely retroverted uterus which you've probably not been able to gauge uh, and you just start dilating anterior wall perforation. So this is the complication of Higar's dilator and uh, with this I finished the uh, Higar's dilator but the other dilators uh, like Pratt's dilator and Fenton's dilator see the, the difference is just this Bougie's dilator the, the difference is just this that in case of Higar's dilator this, it's a very smooth curve the diameter it goes from you know it, it changes between 3 millimeters in case of other dilators it's more sharp the ends are more sharp and there is you know the distance the difference of millimeters is not as much as it is in the case of the gas dilator so i'll be back with more instruments in the end